Hi, welcome to this QuickBooks video. This is part of our series of using QuickBooks in the ag industry. The last video we did uh, actually covered two of the accompanying blog posts that go with these. And we talked about uh, fixed assets, uh, tracking things like um, tractors and, and uh, implements and so forth, and also attached documents, how we could attach documents not only to fixed assets but to other things in QuickBooks as well. So this video actually matches the third in the series of blog posts, and this is about workers' compensation insurance. And QuickBooks does have a feature that will track workers' compensation uh, insurance and, and help us to fill out those reports for them. The reason that that's included in this series for ag is that workers' comp can be a little bit more uh, complicated for, uh, for farmers in that you may have several workers' compensation classifications, there are different rates, and one worker might fall under more than one of those. So let's let's look at how QuickBooks can help us with that uh, particular problem. The first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that workers' compensation, that that feature in QuickBooks is set up in our QuickBooks company file. We're going to do that by going to the Edit drop-down menu, Preferences, and then this Payroll and Employees section of Preferences and then over on the Company Preferences tab. And there's a button right here that says Workers' Compensation. When I click that, I get this little window right here. If there was not a check mark there, I would need to, uh, to check that to uh, track Workers' Compensation Insurance. It's already set up in the sample file, but we're going to walk through the steps anyway. And that's why the box is checked. And then I've checked these other two uh, display the message to assign codes, sure, the, you know, that helpful hint there, and um, exclude overtime premium from workers' comp calculation. That will actually be part of the setup as well, but I went ahead and checked the box here. So once I have that, I'll just click OK. Now I can go to the Employees drop-down menu. There's Workers' Compensation section here. I don't want this first one. That's to uh, set up payment through uh, an actual insurance provider. If I just want to track this myself for um, my own reports with my own uh, insurance company, I want to choose this selection, manually track existing workers' comp policy. So I click on that, and it's going to open a wizard. Let me pull that over here so you can see it. And there's going to be several steps in that wizard. So I'll, I'll just click Next. Okay, so this is um, uh, the vendor on my vendor list. This is my insurance company, State Fund, who I pay the uh, premiums to. The uh, policy number, I've put a number in there. That's an optional field, but it, it's actually kind of handy. I mean, if you put this information in there, it will be on the, the checks that you can automatically create, just like you create the uh, payroll tax liability checks after you do payroll. So that's kind of... Um, uh, nice uh, information to have, even though it's not required. I'm going to skip the uh, policy date here. And uh, again, optional field, you could put that in there if you wanted to. So when I click next, so here's a list of employees, and um, I can add new from here. These are the workers' compensation codes, and these are the codes that I already have set up in the file. So I can see, you know, Dan. Normally, he uh, he works in the uh, falls under that orchards and nut crops um, section. Uh, Elizabeth, uh, let's say that she does uh, some clerical work normally, and um, let's put Greg under this uh, field crops code right here. I set those and click next. If um, if I had not set this up already in the sample file. This would allow me to specify whether I had a modification rate. You can see that's grayed out there. Uh, right now it's set at 100%. So whatever that premium is, that's what I have to pay. I don't have a modification that would allow me to pay a little less or make me pay uh, more. Overtime payments. Do we ever pay overtime? Yes, we do. And then do we... Um, do we include those overtime payments in uh, payments in the workers' compensation calculations? I'm going to say no. Now, 
what this means is it's not that all of the overtime payments are not going to be included in the premium. It's only the premium portion of that overtime. So let me just use an easy example. If um, Let's use round numbers. So I have someone who's making $10 an hour. When they're working overtime, they're making 15 time and a half, right? Well, when it comes time to calculate the workers' compensation um, premium amount, it's only the ten dollars that uh, the premium is calculated on, not the fifteen for those overtime hours, and that's what it's telling us here. So that's the correct setting. in In this particular case, you could have a different setting. That's the one I see most often. I'll click next. We'll call it workers' compensation. That works for me. Next. And then uh, this gives us a little bit of information about the work that we've already done. I'll click finish. All right, so there's a couple of things now that I want to look at. Let's, it's going to pull up the help screen for me. Let me get, there we go. Let's look at the payroll center. So I wanted to create a paycheck for someone. And let's just do an unscheduled payroll. I'll pick uh, Greg, and I'll look at his paycheck detail. We now have a workers' comp uh, workers' compensation code column. So I can set that code, and you can see that Greg has worked under a couple of different classifications during this this pay period which in the sample file, just for ease of getting the information in quickly, they only have one paycheck per month. And so um, that's how that's uh, been recorded. So you can, even though I have a workers' compensation code assigned to each employee, that's the default, all right? That's what QuickBooks would record the hours under if I didn't change it. But it gives me the opportunity on this screen in order to modify what that workers comp code should be. So there's two places to do that. Right there on the paycheck is one like I just showed you. If you use the time tracking features in QuickBooks, enter time, let's use a weekly timesheet, let's again look at uh, Greg And let's look at the past week here. So let's look at every 30. So there we go. Here's the timesheet um, that's in there for a, a week in November. The sample file is uh, using December 15th as its um, today date. Here's uh, his hours for that particular week. Uh, where he worked. And here's that workers' compensation code. So, you know, if I needed to add additional time, I could, and I would have the opportunity then to specify exactly what that workers' compensation code should be. So I can set either of those places directly on the paycheck or in the weekly timesheet if I do that. Now, what this does for us then is when it comes time to calculate workers' compensation premium and to fill out that report from our insurance carrier, I can go to Reports, Employees, Workers' Comp Summary, and there's my report that comes up by default for the last month. So again, the sample file thinks it's December 15th, so here's the report for November of uh, 2018. Gives us the gross wages. If there had been any Overtime premium, it would be shown here, that would be subtracted out, and this column then would be our workers' compensation wages. And at, uh, there's an hour, uh, I'm sorry, a uh, column for hours, some uh, reports require that. The rate for each of the classifications, what the workers' compensation premium should be, it modifies it by our experience modification, which in our case was 100%, if you remember when we were going through those setup screens. And here's the amount that this should be due. So, really, um, so you kind of front load some of that work a little bit. You set up that workers' compensation 
feature in QuickBooks, you'll be sure and get those classification codes on all the hours that the employees work. And then the payoff comes when it's time to fill out the report. And there's no going back. There's no guessing. There's, you know, who did what when. It's all right here with the click of the mouse. There's your report. And there's all the information that you should need for that uh, insurance report. So I hope that's helpful. Uh, give that uh, a try and see if that doesn't save you a little bit of time uh, when it comes to tracking workers' comp codes and, and amounts. And thanks for watching the video. We hope you'll stick with us and we'll have another one next week. Thanks.